I've called Rosalie my great mystery ever since she was very young. There is her as a person, and then there is her with her handicap. In this house, she can be by herself for about 30 seconds before we have to check on her. We have to watch her at all times. Autism is a complex disorder that affects social interactions, language and emotions. In Europe, nearly one out of every 100 people is afflicted by the disorder, the diagnosis of which has increased fivefold in the last 20 years. And yet, no specific treatment is available. However, researchers are making progress. The latest advances in imaging and genetics could revolutionize how autism is treated. Today, Europe is taking the lead in research into autism therapies. Major advances are being reported by the EU AIMS project, which is supported by the Innovative Medicines Initiative, or IMI. IMI is a public-private partnership between the European Union and the European pharmaceutical industry, with a budget of 2 billion euros. Thomas Bourgeron is a researcher at the Institut Pasteur in Paris. He and his team are searching for autism genes. First, the patient is seen by a psychiatrist and the autism is diagnosed, which is very important. Then a blood sample is drawn and we isolate the DNA from this sample. The DNA contains three billion letters, A, T, G and C, in a double helix formation. What we see here is an entire chromosome, number 11, for a particular individual. And we can take a virtual tour of this genome, and sometimes we see this, the signal drops. And this drop in the signal shows that this child has lost one, two, three, four, five million letters. And when he has lost these five million letters, he has also lost all of those genes. Everything the laboratory does for this child is focused on figuring out among all these genes which ones are responsible for his autism. There are dozens of genes responsible for autism. Many are involved in the development of neurons and more specifically in the function of the synapses, the points of contact between the neurons. When there is a genetic defect, the synapses are weakened. At this laboratory, researchers have created mice with a gene that has been deactivated in this way. These mice have been mutated into a gene that has been associated with autism. This is an example of social interaction. We will look at the types of contact that they have with their fellow mouse and whether this contact is normal or not, whether there is a lot of contact or not. For this experiment, we have two cages. In the first one, we have two normal mice. In the second, we have one normal mouse and one mutated mouse. On the left, we see that both normal mice seek out contact with one another. While on the right, the mutated mouse is not interested in her fellow mouse and prefers to explore her cage alone. With these experiments, we have validated this model as an autism model to one day try to identify these anomalies in order to correct the deficiencies we have seen in these mice. Autism is a complex disease because there's a huge spectrum in the symptoms and uh, in the expression of the uh, symptoms. And we don't speak about autism, we speak about autism spectrum disorder because it sort of uh, tells you that there's a severity in the degree of the symptoms from, very ab from nearly absent or absent to very, very clear and debilitating. In an effort to improve autism diagnosis, a broad study has been launched at King's College in London. The objective is to identify commonalities among different autistic brains. We try to use the brain information in a way that uses its richness, its three-dimensional richness. So if you imagine, for example, the surface of the brain looks like the Alps or the, the surface of a planet. So we try to take all the three-dimensional information that's available to us about the peaks and the troughs and the valleys and the rivers to put that together to say what's the picture of the brain in someone with autism and can we use that picture to identify individuals with and without autism. So what we can see here are these social regions which are in blue and these are all to do with how we interact with other people and we can also see these language regions down here which are more in red and yellow and we, can, we found that these brain regions, their three-dimensional architecture, really helped us discriminate between people who were and were not autistic. But let's be clear, 
we're not saying that we would use these brain images alone. What we are saying is that just like if you went to a, another specialist in medicine, we would use these images in combination with taking a clinical history to see if we can come up with a better diagnosis for you. What we're now discovering in this project is that you need to bring all these different new technologies together. So imaging, where you can see what's going on in the brain, the knowledge about genetics, the knowledge about proteins. You take all this together and you can develop what we call biomarkers to have something to measure. Because when you start giving medicines, you need to have some kind of measurement. We call it endpoint to study whether it's going to be effective or not. Right now, what matters most for parents is to see their child progress. Their hope is for research to advance, so their child can become more independent. It's over the long term that it becomes difficult to manage. When the child is small and you're kind of fighting for the child to develop, there's a lot of energy, but then it becomes exhausting. She stops developing, there are things that she used to like to do that she doesn't like anymore. We need help. We have to rely on qualified, knowledgeable people to raise our child, because we cannot do it alone. This is something that is really very painful, and it always will be so. To address the challenges raised by this extremely complex disease, it was necessary to launch a unique initiative where uh, all the stakeholders would join effort. This is exactly what the Innovative Medicines Initiative did by launching a consortium where you have all the major pharmaceutical companies uh, involved in neuroscience working together with the best universities, biotech companies, and also involving patients' organizations and those knowing the real-life problems of the patient in order to yeah, develop this unique collaborative approach. <laughs>